conditions under the balloon roof here in Pontiac. Spins it to Humphrey's side. Check that it's Hector at the two. Hector gets to the 21, and that's all. Freeman McNeil will not start at the moment in uniform, but a cheerleader. Quarterback Ken O'Brien, number one in the National Football League, brings his offense onto the field, protected by the little general uh, fields in the middle, Sweeney and Alexander, the guards, McElroy and Powell at tackle. Al Toon, the rookie from Wisconsin, Wesley Walker, the veteran on the outside, Mickey Schuler is the tight end, with Hector and Page, the runners behind O'Brien. dumps it off to Page as fullback and he has four yards in the grasp of Jimmy Williams number 59 from Nebraska the Lions defense we talk about Thanksgiving and the Lions remember 1962 against Green Bay William Gay and Curtis Green on the outside Eric Williams for Doug English on the nose King Allerman Curley and Jimmy Williams Williams a real star on the outside McNorton and Watkins at the corners Graham and Johnson at safety. Second and six. Hector. No gain. Lost a yard. Williams again. Number 59, Jimmy Williams, the number one linebacker, the only number one draft pick on the defensive side for Detroit. Very quick. Watch how quickly he's over behind. That's just good pursuit and a good read on his part. Wayne Fonts, the defensive coordinator, compares him to Hugh Green, the great linebacker he had down in Tampa Bay. He said Jimmy Williams has all those same attributes and that same toughness. We'll talk more about him, but he ran a 4-3-4 at Nebraska, and that's uh, sprinter stuff. Third down and seven. O'Brien in the crowd hits Schuler, and on third down, Schuler has the first down at the Jets 35 yard line. William Graham made the tackle. Very nice play. Schuler, a money receiver. Let's take a let's take a quick listen to Mickey Schuler. Well, how he feels about third downs. <laughs> well, we'll get that later for you. Here's Schuler coming onto the outside. Delaying and a little mix up there between he and Al Toon. Schuler getting inside. William Graham, 33, the man assigned to block him. And he's lucky to pull that ball down. Had it hooked up on his shoulder bed. 52nd catch of the season for Schuler. He leads the Jets, and he's second only to Todd Christensen among NFL tight ends. Draw play, and Hector has a hole, picks up about four to the Jets' 39-yard line before August Curley, number 50, and Kurt Allerman, 95, can make the stop. There's Curley, a former Southern California star. Darrell Rogers talks about his defense as being a bleed -em defense. And I said, bleed -em. What does that mean? He said, we try and keep them in front of us and make them make the mistakes. He said, we've given up a lot of yardage, but we've forced a lot of people to make their own errors. It's kind of a bend, but don't break philosophy. Almost encouraging them to run and not pass. That's shown in motion. O'Brien looks as if he wanted to go deep and almost intercepted. August Curley in front of the intended target, Mickey Schuler. His dad was August Sr. Granddaddy was Augustus Curley. I think the thing that Ken O'Brien has done best as a young quarterback is avoid the interceptions. Only six interceptions on the season, 19 touchdowns. He almost went to seven with this pass, but even that one was thrown down. Very difficult for the defensive linebacker to get around and get his hands on the football deep and then dumps it off off the wrong foot almost into the arms of the being a third down six and trouble fumbles and the lions have the turnover gay with a hit william gay recovers the ball and steve box 68 68 gay with a hit and box recovered the ball the one thing that Ken O'Brien still has great trouble with is when he cannot find his receiver. There's a moment there when he suddenly panics. He has control, but watch him when he sees there's no receiver. Look at his feet. He all of a sudden doesn't know what to do. Right there, the ball is stripped out from the blind side, and Detroit has the big turnover in field position. All year, 
a first down at the Jet 37. James Jones from Florida, number one pick a couple of years ago. He leads the Lions in rushing and in pass receiving. He's caught at least one pass in every game that he has played here in Detroit. The offense for the Lions. Mott the center. Dietrich and Dorney. Dorney normally a tackle inside of the guard with Stringer now a tackle along with the number one draft pick Lomas Brown at left tackle. Nichols and Thompson the veterans outside. Lewis the tight end with Moore and Jones behind Eric Kippel. Second down five. Kippel's first throw is to Jones so he continues his streak and has the first down at the Jets 23. yards before Johnny Lynn can make the tackle. The Jets defensively have been tough against the run. Klecko on the nose, maybe the best player at that position in the NFL now. Gastineau and Bennett on the outside. Charles Jackson, Kyle Clifton, Lance Mel playing though injured, and Rusty Gilbo, the linebackers. Bobby Jackson with a bad neck, and Johnny Lynn at the corner. Springs and Hamilton play the safety spot. First down, Detroit at the Jets 23. Inside the 20 yard line, a gain of three before Kyle Clifton from TCU can make the tackle. Two runs in the first set by this Detroit team right at Mark Gastineau. I think two things they're trying to do. First, they want to freeze Gastineau, take away his great pass rush, but also they want to make him play the running game. They want to find out if he can stop James Jones. And Jones is a fine running back, gained over 100 yards earlier in the year in back to back games against Dallas and Miami. Second down, seven. Play action. It's Leonard Thompson, and he has it first and goal at the New York nine yard line. Leonard Thompson, who has played in over 150 consecutive games with the Lions. Bob Greasy talked about comfort and confidence. Great confidence here. Leonard Thompson just makes a little wiggle and gets stopped up out there in front of Johnny Lynn and then pops down and gets that ball all the way to the nine before they get him on the ground. Thompson with a good inside move. First down, goal to go at the nine-yard line for Detroit. Just underway here in Pontiac Silverdome. Jones runs right into his own blocker and there's Marty Lyon, 93, from Alabama to make the tackle. Detroit has had trouble blocking the even man lines, the four man line. I would expect that Bud Carson, who has looked at a lot of film, even though they didn't have much time to get ready, will be employing quite a bit of four man line here today. Hipple from Utah State. They produced another pretty good athlete named Merlin Olson a few years ago. He sets his line at the nine, second down. to push him back spearheaded by Lance Mel and Kyle Clifton it'll be third and goal at the one there's Lewis right here and as he comes down to the middle of the field the linebackers will drop to either side and a good throw by Hipple as you see him released to the inside gets in between the two linebackers and then sits down finds the open area just doesn't get into the end zone is spotted just inside the one yard line on third and goal. Hipple throws wide open and Rob Rubick drops the ball. Rubick a second tight end all alone and could not tuck it away for the six. And so the Lions will go for a short, short field goal. They had the perfect call little play action back pass and Lance Bell who's still playing on that bad arch could not make up the ground he gets caught in traffic he's trying to come across to the inside but the pass is dropped and oh how costly that is they'll have to go for the three Rubik has only two catches all season long that would have been his first touchdown Eddie Murray hits his eighth consecutive field goal you know he's 22 for 26 this year and the Lions actually settle unhappily for three. 
Don't tell me you know about turbos until you go have some fun with this little puppy. The turbo on Mazda's new 626 GT is a new design at light. Points per game at home, you're going to win most of them as the Lions have been perfect here in the Silverdome, but on the road, 11 points a game, and that includes 28 in their only road win at Atlanta. You throw that one out, and they've averaged just about a touchdown a game playing away from this building. They take an early 3-0 lead on Murray's 19-yard field goal. That is not a good statistic, a 19-yard field goal. That means you were close and didn't get the seven. Murray lines it to Humphrey's side, and it becomes a very good kick. Jets will take over at the 20-yard line. A reminder, we'll be selecting the Budweiser most valuable player in today's Thanksgiving game. Take along with us and see the player you might pick for that award. We'll announce it later. Ken O'Brien fumbled in his last uh, play on this field in this quarter, and it led to the field goal. O'Brien from the University of California, Davis. He was 25 years of age yesterday. What terrific numbers for him. Best percentage of any passer in the NFL, best interception percentage. Hector for six. Johnny Hector, who has never rushed for 1,000 yards as a Jet. Of course, uh, playing in reserve behind Freeman McGee, it's tough to get the opportunity. He had 97 last Sunday. He had 97 once last year against Cleveland. And uh, he's really salivating. He's thinking about trying to get to that century mark. There's McNeil uh, cheering him on. And, of course, against the Lions, a poorest record against the rush in the NFL. Hector thinks this might be his day. Close to a first down at the 30-yard line. Kurt Hallerman made the tackle. We talked to Joe Fields about what he has to do as he gets to the line of scrimmage. Center has some interesting responsibilities. Ferguson also on the tackle. In a game like today, we're expecting a lot of different things from the Detroit Lions, a lot of different blitzes, a lot of different defensive fronts. So in this kind of situation, I'm expecting to make a lot of calls for the offensive linemen and also to help the quarterback out so he knows what we're all doing up front. There he is. He calls signals for the rest of the line. The general he is in the middle of that offensive line. It was a first down picked up by Hector, and O'Brien on first down throws a wobbler incomplete. Now whether somebody hit his arm or the ball was tipped, but that one was spinning like an end-over-end -end kick toward Wesley Walker. Hit by Angelo King and William Gay just as he tried to release that ball, and it went awry. He's lucky it was not intercepted. I believe he wanted Schuler on the right-hand side, but he was hit very hard by two of those Lions. Watch him from the blind side now. Just as he starts that arm forward, he is hit and misdirected that pass. So many interceptions you see come off that kind of play on the quarterback. And so many injuries for the quarterback, you can see why. King from South Carolina State, the former Dallas Cowboy. Beautiful throw to Schuler in, knocked down by William Frizzell. He may have saved the touchdown. Picked out of North Carolina Central in Durham, North Carolina last year. Frizzell just tall enough to knock that away from Schuler, who seemed wide open. One of the most difficult things to teach a quarterback is what kind of pass to throw in given situations. Sometimes you've got to zip that ball. Sometimes you've got to loft it. O'Brien is starting to make those choices automatically. Lofted that ball. It was just a fingertip on that ball. If it goes over the fingers of Frizzell, it's a big, big game. See if the Lions are coming with a blitz on third and ten. met him at the 35 a gain of just four and on comes Dave Jennings and the Jets punting unit well the advantage that we had talked about on the line of scrimmage certainly has not been evident for the Jets as the Lions I think at a higher emotional level to start this game the Jets kind of sluggish and it's hard to get started you've only had a couple of days to rest they better get going here pretty quick Pete Manley standing back at the Lion 20. St. Lawrence University. Kick it, he'll deliver about the 25. Short kick. Manley lets it bounce. And the Jets roll to 
the 23. Timeout, five minutes and 54 seconds remaining in this opening period. It's the Lions leading. Jets uh, working on this holiday for the fifth time in their history. The Lions record is a bit surprising. It just would seem that through the years that they have won more than than that. Only one game above 500 on Thanksgiving. Well, the 10 days off for the winner really is a bonus. 3-0 Detroit. 57-yard punt by Jennings. Hippo goes down in the grasp of you-know-who. Number 99, Mark Gastineau. His 10th and a half sack this year leads the Jets. Submarine sack by Gastineau. They've moved Marty Lyons out on the outside. He's on the other side. Gastineau is cut at the line. Look at him just crawling in there. I don't think Hippo could see. He can crawl faster. Most guys can run in to make that sack. Here he is in isolation. Knocked down, and uh, Hippo looking downfield certainly didn't see the 265 pound Gastineau swimming in for the sack. down. Johnny Lynn made the hit. 16 yards on the play. The offensive coordinator for the Lions, Bob Baker, calling a good game so far as he mixes his plays nicely. That particular situation, they caught the Jets dropping off deep. There's Bob Baker on the sideline, a veteran coach, and uh, he certainly has been a big assist to Darrell Rogers here as he's helped to formulate offensive plans. They're going to bring the chain gang all the way across the field to measure on the play. Dick, we talked about the Lions defense being a bleed em defense, a bend but don't break defense. On the other side, the Jets, what I would call a pressure defense. They try and make you play on a short field. They tend to bring everyone up and squeeze you, push on you. However, the one thing they're concerned about, and of course you see the first down being signal the one thing they're concerned about they've had so many injuries in their secondary you've got to have some continuity there if you want to play that bump and run if you want to play tight they're concerned about Bobby Jackson lasting out the day has a neck injury so we'll keep an eye on some of those jet defensive backs both Jackson and Mel the inside linebacker for the Jets playing hurt will go as far as they can first down Lions at their 39 the 42 ask him about this holiday and so many of the players asking us to say hello to their families watching around the country today and James Jones said my mother I got to thank her down in Fort Lauderdale Florida she she raised us while dad was off earning the dollars driving a truck and it was her inspiration and, uh, never acknowledging the fact that things might be tough gave me uh, a feeling that I'll carry the rest of my life and certainly has been part of his uh, great athletic career at Florida and now is a fine player here in the National Football League. That story will be repeated over and over in both locker rooms. Jones again to the 44. Rusty Gilbo with the tackle. It'll be third and four. A chance to look at what the... Uh Jets are doing defensively as they've been stacking up on the inside. They're playing what what actually amounts to a, a Chicago type defense with both of these linemen just loaded up inside Barry Bennett and here's Gaston. They're all very tight inside. They're penetrating and pinching on the inside here. Making it difficult to get that running game going. That's that 46 defense we see in Chicago right there. Kimball is in trouble. A first down at the Jets 43. And what a play by Hippel under pressure. That was a basketball shot he threw to Jones, who makes a one-handed catch and 13 yards, but a flag is down. You ask a quarterback what he's thinking about when they're coming at him. And he told us yesterday, he said, you've got to concentrate on the receivers. You can't think about what they're going to do to you when they get there. He has been so abused during this season. 
in our opening illegal formation took earlier and we just heard the announcement they're going to call it back because of a penalty but from the other side of the field you see the pressure you realize what great concentration it takes and what a great catch that was with the one head by James Jones and it's called back Rich Springer the right tackle and he's assigned primarily Mark Gastineau today guilty of holding play by Kerry Glenn make that Harry Hamilton who came up from the secondary to drop him cleanly shy of the 45 and on fourth down the Lions will have to punt dirty Harry as he calls himself a tough defensive hitter he earned that name He's, he comes in and he'll pop you he's a hitter no question about it going back to the penalty it was not holding on Stringer they called him for an illegal formation apparently he was an uncovered ineligible receiver at that end of the line means a wide receiver had to be up on the line he was too far back Kurt Sohn, who had that key punt return in overtime to set up the win against New England last Sunday is back at the 10 yard line for the Jets Mike Black averaging about 42 and a half yards per punt on the year he kicked for Rogers at Arizona State short end over end fair catch zone at the 22 yard line Jennings and Black their first punts are both quite short that one was 32 yards 253 remaining in the first period of well, the Vikings and the Lions back in 1968 and the mud of then Briggs Stadium you played the year before and then you also played here in the Silverdome 67 I played two of these games 67 and 75 we were lucky enough to win both of them but out in the mud it's a different ball game believe me I'm ask you about that whether you liked it better in the mud or on the hard carpet Jets trailing three nothing less than three minutes left first quarter and O'Brien with a flag down he's got his man for a possible first down Al Toon Angelo King with a tackle at the 35 we'll check the flag motion against the Jets yeah their holiday spent with a lunch pail as well Chuck Eberling's crew of Messer illegal well. motion number 44 offense Johnson Orham Curry Dodez and Skelton Jets first and 10 of the New York 17 first and 15 did you like playing in the mud I actually did uh, of course I felt it was to my advantage because I could block out the pain mentally and, and I didn't have to handle the football but I kind of enjoyed it <laughs> draw play to Hector and the former Texas A&M star teamed with Ernest Jackson former Charger now with Philadelphia Eagles with the Aggies brought down by Curley and Eric Williams on the tackle for Detroit Curtis Green Down, nine, have a big Jets Sunday coming up on NBC and don't forget the Giants you folks uh, watching in New York the Giants will be here on the home of the Peacock on Sunday so join us at 1230 for NFL 85 prior to the Giants O'Brien looking deep throws underneath incomplete to Wesley Walker coming back to meet the ball Walker who had that 88 yard touchdown against New England on Sunday Jimmy Williams the closest lion it's third down good training there as you saw the both receiver and quarterback reacting to a problem they weren't open early Walker sensed that his quarterback was in trouble and headed back good receiver comes back to the football in that situation ball thrown a little bit too hot for Walker to handle but the, the idea was right the, the experience was good Tune to the right Rocky Cleaver now in he's to the left and Sohn now in motion down goes O'Brien the second sack and the 49th time this year Ken O'Brien has been dropped trying to pass William Gay credited with a sack his fourth of the year so Gay has had a big first quarter he's the man who forced the fumble that led to the Lions field goal started his NFL career as a tight end and moved inside to become a very aggressive defensive lineman pressure from outside and from inside you see his legs stripped away by Gay no chance for O'Brien as you see Dave Jennings will take the snap right on the goal line Pete Manley back at the Lions 43. Short kick. Manley has.
has a chance to return. Juggling reception. And now dropped at the Jets 40 yard line. So good field position for the Detroit Lions. 34 yard punt. Eight yards on the return by Manley. One minute, 11 seconds remaining in the first quarter. And the Jets are down to Detroit 3 0. Coming up this weekend. James Jones gains a yard at best into the grasp of Joe Klecko, or Jim Jones, as he called himself back in his semi pro days. That was an interesting uh, feature by Ahmad Rashad as he chatted with the likable Klecko. Here is Joe Klecko, number 73, in that angled position, that stealer position. You see him just throwing Mott to the outside, and Klecko there to wrestle down the running back. A tremendous combination of quickness and strength. Jones, the workhorse, can't break the fourth tackle as he was bouncing off. Jets white shirts and Lance Mel and Harry Hamilton without the helmet finally bring him down no game again Klecko penetrating driving inside on that play Joe Klecko a possible passing situation on third and nine this is where he's so tough he General Rogers was saying we almost have to sign two men to block him and that leaves Lance Mel an uncovered defender as the gun sounds the end of the first quarter here at the Silver Dome in Pontiac Michigan the score in this Thanksgiving traditional the Lions three the Jets a passing situation third and long for Eric Kippel against six defensive backs over the middle what a catch by Mark Nichols and a first down at the 26 yard line. Nichols first catch of the year. Let's see how he got open Bob Greasy. Well Dick Mark Nichols right here lined up right here. The linebacker will blitz leaving this whole area open. He's just going to run to the middle of the field and it's a very good throw by Ari Kippel. See the linebacker blitzes leaves the middle of the field open. He releases to the inside and across. Good throw out in front of the receiver. Big first down for uh, Detroit. Nichols something, from San Jose State. Excuse me, Dick. Something we didn't see. Kippel leveled again. He's been hit a number of times, and he's got sore ribs. He's got a sore body in general. Doing all the protection he can get himself. Fires open again. Leonard Thompson. He has a touchdown. He's going after Dry right down the middle, and the Lions true to four. Top at home. 70,000 has cheered the Lions into a 10 0 lead over the favorite New York Jets. And Eddie Murray now to kick to Johnny Hector and Bobby Humphrey. It's to Humphrey's side. He's going to take it out. Hector tried to keep him in the end zone. Humphrey wouldn't listen and maybe with good cause. He's all the way to the 28, and for a moment appeared he might go even farther. Let's go back now to the touchdown 25-yard pass, Hipple to Leonard Thompson. Leonard Thompson working one-on-one -on -one on Bobby Jackson, and Jackson, you remember, has a neck strain. He doesn't put his head in on the tackle, and because of that, missed the tackle and allowed Thompson to get away, a case where an injury really hurt him. Leonard Thompson. I wonder if they'll replay that on his radio station in Phoenix. K-S-U-N. K-Sun in Phoenix. Interestingly, it's an all-children's radio station. It's their format. Night and day. Just the program to the kids. So Brian has a man open. Wesley Walker. And Walker's to the 24 of Detroit. There's the big play from the Jets. And O'Brien may not be happy he had a touchdown had he sprung it out there a little farther. The play action fake. Watch the safety right here. Graham is going to get beat. Walker's going to come from this side, but all the play acting in here is going to pull him up, and then the throw is going to go over his head. See the play action up front. Graham, 33, holds, steps forward, and now it's too late. Walker is behind him, and a big play for the Jets. Boy, that illustrates how really fast this game is. He just took that one ball step, and suddenly there's Walker flying by him. First down, Jets at the 24. Another play action for O'Brien. Intercepted and dropped. Oh, my. Angelo King had it right in his mitts as they volleyballed it around. And 
in the Lions secondary, but no one could squeeze it. As Vernon Maxwell. Several Lions with their hands on that football. Vernon Maxwell, number 98, also had a chance at it. We'll see it from the other side of the field. O'Brien, I think, deciding he wanted to run here at the last minute, seeing a receiver open, flicked that ball, but thrown a little too hard. Oh, it's right in your hands, and you've got a chance to keep going with some open field. It was Maxwell, the number two pick of the Colts a couple of years ago out of Arizona State. With second life, O'Brien just misses connections with Johnny Hector, and a flag is down. Maybe a late hit on O'Brien. I think William Gay is the man who came in and leveled O'Brien late from the backside, and that's going to be costly to the Detroit Lions. They'll mark off the big penalty, but... O'Brien shaking his head. This unnecessary roughness, roughing the passer. Number 79, defense. First down. Gay on O'Brien, and you can feel this 10 yards. Ooh. Oh, he gets sandwiched and a whiplash tackle. Eric Williams was in there as well, and he was holding O'Brien from one side, and Gay delivered the crushing blow. It's a 15-yard penalty that takes it down to the 12-yard line, and a first down with it. Hector caught from the backside, but Curtis Green, who played his football at Alabama State. We talked about the bend but don't break philosophy of this Lion defense. Well, they China kind of changed their whole philosophy when they get inside that 20 yard line and they suddenly get very aggressive they come with the blitz as they did on that play throwing Maxwell very aggressively from the outside was his penetration that really broke up that play Tune to the right Walker left O'Brien looking for Tune instead goes oh almost intercepted by Bobby Watkins as he cut in front of Mickey Schuler. Schuler, the tight end crossing and Watkins played it very well, number 27 from Southwest Texas State, the Bobcats, who were the Division II national champions two years ago. O'Brien has very good rapport, good feelings on these kind of downs for Mickey Schuler. On this particular down, Schuler fighting as hard as he can to get away. But I don't know that O'Brien saw the shot from Bobby Watkins. Bobby drifted into that picture. Quarterback has got to see those other defenders coming in like that. Now the crowd into it. Again, almost intercepted by the Lions. John Bostick had it. William Frizzell was there as well. But it was Bostick who could have had the touchback for Detroit. Instead, the Jets have a chance for three. I think that's the fourth time today that O'Brien has put it in the hands of these Detroit defenders. And if this defense has had a weakness on pass defense, besides the problems they've had covering people, it's the inability of their defensive pass, of their defensive backs, to catch the ball when it's in their hands. They have done it again today. Knock it down. Brian Van Hand. Leahy from 20. Jets have their first points of this afternoon with 12 minutes and a tick left in this first half. It's the Detroit Lions. 10, the New York Lions defense. Harris and Brown and Sam Williams, Darius McCord, Joe Schmidt. Oh, what a kick. A.J. Jones, if he lets that ball go, actually his foot was out of bounds, so the ball should be out of bounds to get it at the a chance to kick it over again with a five-yard penalty. I think they're saying because he had one foot out of bounds that that's exactly what's going to happen. I'll let the officials sort it out. There's the, there's the penalty flag, yes. It'll be an illegal procedure call against the Jets. There's a break for the Lions. Awareness. You've got to know where that sideline is. Had his feet just barely been in bounds and he taken the step out of bounds, they would have had to put it into play inside their own five-yard line. I don't think he knew where that foot was. He was lucky. He really was. So, Jam Jones, A.J. Jones. This is a tough Lions team. They have a June Jones and a John James and an A.J. Jones. <laughs> <laughs> So after the five-yard penalty, Leahy will have to kick it from the 30-yard line. You uh, 
You were saying that Roger Brown who was such a great tackle with the Lions. We saw that shot as they embraced uh, Bard Starr. Then you had to play again. You played offense that year? Well, I played defensive tackle, and I started all through that year. But we were getting ready to come to Detroit. Our coach was mad at our two starting guards in the starting center, benched them, put some defensive players in those positions, including me, and told us we were going to play both ways. And he said, and Merlin, you're going to play on Roger Brown. And I said, <laughs> what? <laughs> Who was he mad at? <laughs> Leahy kicking again to Jones, former Texas star at the 20. Ooh, as he ripped at the 25, and he's to the 27 in the grasp of Tom Baldwin, number 95. The Jets, again, starting deep. Well, they've started deep in their own end. The Lions have had the better field position. This is so often a game of field position, Dick. And the Jets praying for a chance to start early or start out in the middle of the field somewhere. The Lions, on the other hand, have had tremendous field position all day long. Here they are again. Not in great field position. This is about as bad as they've started all day long. There are the drives. Started on their 37, the 29, 39, and their 27. Good field position all day long. Twice in New York territory, and those two led the scores. Nichols, the intended target, and Johnny Lynn got there just in time. The pass seemed to float a bit, got a little push and shove going. Said, wait a minute, I wanted the white meat. No, no, you said you wanted the drumstick. Boy. Dorney, Keith Dorney, the former All-American at Penn State. He's playing in the middle and has only played a couple of games at guard. He's a tackle. Can you imagine the responsibility you'd have of taking on Joe Klecko in the middle there? Dorney and Klecko locked up. I mean, that is nose to nose. I don't think that anyone in the league is playing better in the defensive line than Klecko. And when you have to play an unusual position, going from tackle to guard, and then take on Klecko, too, that's a load. Hippo to Thompson. Incomplete. And again, the line ever so close to making connections, but Bobby Jackson and Kirk Springs got there in time to knock it away. Keith Dorney, not only is he moving to a strange position from tackle to guard, never played guard before this year, he's playing with a painful broken toe. Just go out there and, and you do the best you can. Uh, you, you know, certainly the, the toe's gonna hurt a little bit, but uh, you just have to try to block it out and, and, and go out and do your job, you know, regardless of, uh, of how your toe feels. Look at the way those feet are being jammed around. I saw him get stepped on in practice on Tuesday, and the pain, he jumped clear up off the ground. Said a few things that I was glad to be able to close my ears to. Like a long-tailed cat in a room full of rocking chairs with that bad toe. Oops. Stringer, number 71, the right tackle, moved back, and that'll cost the Lions five. Ball start, number 71, offense. go inside the tremendous pressure a lot of these players are wearing basketball shoes not football shoes there are the feet of stringer right there moving too quickly but look at the kind of quick foot movement the kind of feet and, and look how they're stepping all over on each other Tony glad to get out of that one without that toe aching anymore now anyone who's ever had just a, a bad toe or a sore toe knows how tough it is to get around walking here's a man playing football with 200 300 pounders jumping on you he does have some medical help though I'm sure they put some painkiller in that toe third and 15 for the Lions who lead 10 to 3 11 and a half minutes first half wide open and a first down Pete Manley from Northern Arizona the number two pick of the Lions last year He's starting to deliver here late in 85. Receiver to catch a pass is going to break to the inside and catch the ball right over the middle for the first down. Third and 15, the defensive backs come man-to-man -man coverage. The flanker trails him to the inside and a good catch by the young receiver. And it has done a good job picking up first downs on third and long. early in the game and uh, suddenly they are reminded that that talented Jones is back there they give him a couple of yards they would get a shot at Pete Manley interesting you look down there he's wearing a glove on one hand and no glove on the other hand and I said uh, 
Isn't that a little strange? He said, well, when I was a freshman in college, I broke a finger on my hand. Here he is on the sideline. He said, I broke a finger on my left hand, and I taped it, but I didn't get the kind of support, so I got a glove. It's a football glove that gave me some protection on the left hand, and I've worn one glove ever since. Well, Michael Jackson, a great Northern Arizona fan, <laughs> noted that, and the uh, trends do begin somewhere. Incomplete. Mark Nichols, the intended receiver, and Johnny Lynn bats it away. Well, a good defensive backs kind of burp those receivers, just like you burp a baby. They let them get that uh, ball up in the air, and then they say, hey, <laughs> think about the ribs here. Lynn, who played his football out in Westwood, California. UCLA in the Rose Bowl again for Terry Donahue, and we'll have that, of course, here on NBC. And what a great January 1st lineup we have here on NBC. Brother Brazel, Bud Carson, defensive coordinator, uh, not happy, I'm sure, with the way his defense is playing so far in this game. Third down eight. Hit pull over the middle, and Thompson was open. Pass was a little high, but Leonard knows he should have caught it. Bobby Jackson on that play, and Leonard Lyles collided. Lyles up in almost a linebacking position. Trying to get to the outside to cover the motion man, ran right into Jackson and knocked him down. And had Hipple been able to get that ball on target, that would have been a giant game. Dale Rogers, who played his college ball at Fresno State, was a wide receiver. In fact, uh, a couple of years, or tried to in the NFL with the Lions as a or with the uh, LA Rams as a defensive back. Kurt Sohn is deep at the ten. Black second punt of the afternoon. the 23-yard line. Uh, the Jets trailing by a touchdown in possession of the pumpkin after a 33-yard kick by Mike Black. We have 9.56 remaining in the mod uh, Rashad's proposal. You know, when a guy has to use the network to make the phone call, what kind of rings he going to give her? Yeah, that's something <laughs> definitely wrong with that. And the other thing, what if she says no now? Think about that. I, has he heard yet? Johnny Hector rings the bell for about eight as he's to the 31 yard line. Kind of reminds me, Dick, of one of the first times I asked a girl to dance with me and uh, walked all the way across the room. I said, Would you like to dance? She said, No. <laughs> Where do you go? Here's the way the Jets have started today. As you can see, they have had tough field position all day long. When you have that far to go, it makes it very hard on an offense. A 48 yard pass from O'Brien to Wesley Walker got them in position for their only points, a field goal. Hector has a first down at the 35-yard line. Bobby Watkins trips him up. And uh, Johnny Hector continues to be the dominant runner in this game. He certainly is running well, but he is not Freeman McNeil. And the Jets really miss Freeman's cutting and slashing because he's the home run hitter. I'm sure he is upset about not having a chance to play today, but he does want to heal. I don't blame him for that either. Now, Hector again. Good chunk of yardage. Eight more for Hector, who's now over 40 yards in this first half. Jimmy Williams, 59, assisted by Bruce McNorton. If you're going to control a 3-4 defense, you've got to control that nose, man. Eric Williams right here. And that's 65, Joe Fields. Look how he just turns that nose man aside and just turns him right away. Hector takes the slant through there and gets a nice game. That'll make Joe Fields' mom down in uh, St. Petersburg, Florida, please. She's quite a fan. Hector has the first down, and we say quite a fan, not just of her son. Obviously, uh, you watch your own boy play, but Joe Field says, my mom will tape other games so that when she's watching mine, she can go watch the other games she missed someplace else. She, he, she really was the inspiration. Fields said, I was going to go to a college that didn't have a football team. My mom says, oh, no, you don't. You go somewhere where they have a program. Went to a little Widener College and eventually uh, picked off by the New York Jets and now a star in the NFL. I think you make a good point. Uh, we've dedicated this game to the moms and the wives and the grandmoms. And I'll tell you, the, the women know an awful lot about this game. We don't always give them enough credit for their football knowledge yeah, and I, for their interest. I never take a test with your wife, Susan. I know that. <laughs> oh! Al Toon, and fortunately for O'Brien, and maybe by design, he was. 
was uh, blown away on that throw. That's a particular defense that Wayne Fonts had put in. They know that the Jets like that stop pattern. That's about an eight yard run out and then a stop. There's Wayne Fonts signaling in the defense. He said we're going to make it look like we're dropping off and then stop. We're hoping we can catch them throwing that stop pattern and intercept it and go all the way. Had McNaughton not stumbled, he may well have done it on that last play. On the 47, second and 10 for O'Brien. It might be a fumble. If it is, it's a Lions ball. Let's wait for the officials. Yep, fumble. Recovered by William Gay. Curtis Green, 62, hit him from the backside. And they say that O'Brien's arm was not going forward. That's the second fumble by the Jets quarterback. O'Brien just lost that football. I don't think I don't think anyone hit him as he had his hand out there. He gets away from the pressure. As you look at it from the other side of the field, watch him. Does a good job here of avoiding the pressure. One shot from the backside, but no one has a hold of him here. Just started to whip that ball back. It slipped out of his hand. And indeed it was a good call by the officials. Fumble all the way. Credit Gay with a fumble recovery and a sack. From the 43, Hipple off play action with Klecko all over him. Has a man, Nichols. And a good play by Johnny Lynn. That's a second long gainer denied by Lynn, number 29, at the last moment. Nichols was open behind him. That'll, start, that'll stop your heart if you're the defensive coordinator because they had the play. Even though Hipple was under pressure, he's still able to get this ball off. Bobby Jackson not able to get across to help right there. Kirk Springs, 21, coming across as a safety. Look at the pressure Klecko puts on Hipple. Oh, you talk about, oh, he's wearing a big set of rib pads to protect him. He said, I wish I had pads for the rest of my body. Jones with a flag down. And James Jones stretches to the Lion, to the Jets 36-yard line. Rusty Gilbo with a tackle. We'll check the penalty. Against the Jets. 3-5 oh, for Detroit. There's the jacket being worn by the Lions quarterback. Hit so hard earlier in the season by Milt McCall when they were playing the 49ers that his back actually went into spasm. Offside, number 73. Defense, five yards, still second down. And not only his back in spasm, but he separated the rib cartilage. Painful injury. Last week, uh, some of you who watched our opening saw that vicious shot he took from Scott Brantley that just separated ball and helmet and he lay on the ground for a long time in semi-consciousness. Simple is one tough quarterback. He said if he'd have seen him coming, he might have been hurt because he would have braced himself. He said, I didn't even see him. Boy, he felt it. First and five. It's to Mark Nichols, and the Lions have another touchdown. Front 16 to 3. Mark Nichols going down. He's isolated right here. Jackson tries to get in front. Makes a bad decision defensively. Tried to get in front to knock that one away and did not make it. Eddie Murray tacks on the extra point. Now the Detroit line springs. The play action is going to go this way. As Hipple comes back, Springs is going to run away. Nichols will come from this side and make the catch. We see the play action. Springs runs to the right side of the field. Hipple throws the ball very quickly way to the inside, gives the receiver a lot of room to run to, and he outruns Johnny Lynn. Springs gets there too late. Mark Nichols. Thanksgiving smile. Maybe the other quarterback, Joe Ferguson. Is, we get a look at there's Ferguson. Of course, a Buffalo yard game. penalty. To Bobby Humphrey at the eight. Humphrey is dangerous and is all the way to the 45 yard line. Humphrey from New Mexico State, the number one kick returner, kickoff returner in the NFL last year. We've got a penalty, though. They're going to mark it back. It 
has been a long first half and now he knows how Don Shula Tom Landry Bill Walsh Bud Grant the teams that have come to this Silver Dome have really tasted unusual punishment from the Lions. They will block number 59 on the receiving team first down. And yet you ask those same teams and others who play the Lions on the road and they say how can Detroit be six and six. Well you're learning today. We certainly find out. They play better. Oh, I think that's the secret. O'Brien to Schuler. To the 19 yard line. Close to a first down. Allerman and Curley with the tackle. Curley on the tackle for Detroit. They may have to first measure. No, they say he has the necessary yardage just shy of the 20. You ask how can a team be so much first different 10, from week to week even as opposed to at home and away. It's emotion I think. But emotion plays a big role. Hector darting into the secondary and slammed down at about the 29 after a nine yard gain. Demetrius Johnson number 21 with a hit. High up above the floor of this stadium. The man on the far right Rich Kotite. Kotite the offensive coordinator sending the plays down over on the far left. That's bad rad. Brad Kovic who coaches the linebackers for this team. Two of the brain trusts here. Second and one. And it's the fullback Tony Page with a rare carry. The second year man from Virginia Tech has a first down at the 33. Usually don't call Page's name until they get into a first and goal situation. He has seven touchdowns as you can see on limited carry. Zeke Bratkowski. He's the quarterback coach. He's done a good job with O'Brien. You see him signaling in the offensive play to the quarterback. Both Walker and Toon to the left. Field as William Gay slowed him down, and Hector did a good job to pick up a couple of yards before Eric Williams, 76, could secure. Take a look at William Gay, Dick. One of the reasons why this play doesn't work is penetration into the pocket. As the guard pulls, the runner's going to come this way. But watch William Gay, 79, penetration into the backfield gets a part of the runner, and that throws off the timing of the play. And his friends get there to make the sack attack. So got a part of the guard, guard Dan Alexander to hold him up. O'Brien to the outside Al Toon and the talented rookie from Wisconsin has a first down and what a job Toon has done a starter just three games ago and in three games as a starter he's caught 22 passes plus this one today. He's also playing with tightly wrapped ribs hurt on the left side of the ribs took a real beating in that game against New England last week this Detroit defense as we mentioned tends to lay off a little bit especially on the corners Stop Bobby Watkins giving Toon plenty of room on that play. On first down O'Brien goes the other way on a one handed spear by Johnny Hector and with it a five yard gain before Jimmy Williams can run him off the field to play. Well three games remain after this weekend and after this game for these two clubs the Jets will be at Buffalo and then go home for a delightful experience the Bears and the Cleveland Browns. Of course they are just that one game ahead of New England and Miami pursuing in the very competitive AFC East. This is the surprise team the New York Jets. Play action. O'Brien in trouble again and down he goes. Jimmy Williams and Curtis Green. When you talk to the Jets coaches and you talk to people who've had a chance to watch young Ken O'Brien they say that he has made tremendous progress in his ability to read defenses in his ability to call plays in his leadership. The one place he still has trouble is when he cannot find an open receiver and he has to find room in that pocket make the decision whether he's going to run or try and throw the ball away. And so far he has always tended to lean toward eating the ball taking the sack. Well that's better than that's better than throwing a bad pass but he's got to learn how to throw that ball out of bounds. He lost seven yards on that one plus the punishment you take. He's been sacked 51 times this year more than any quarterback. Hector they try to cross up the lines with a run and Hector 
Boy, what an effort by him to get to the 50 yard line, but short of a first down by about three and a half. Took almost the entire Lion team to stop Hector. And with three minutes left in the half, the Lions will get the ball again with a 17 to 3 lead. So far in this game, a much more enthusiastic and a much more determined effort from the Lions, but you can't fault Johnny Hector. He's giving them all he has. So far today, though, the Jets not getting an all-out performance from their team. Jennings, a couple of short kicks. Manley stands at the 10. Two turnovers. Lions recovering a couple of fumbles. There's a good kick by Jennings. But will it stay in the field of play? No. Kicks into the end zone, and the Lions will start from their 20. 50 yards minus the 20. Excuse me, Dick. Jennings, I think, hoping that one of his players could have gotten over there. That ball stayed in the field of play long enough for someone to down it. Flowers had gone down. Of course, he's the specialist that the Jets picked up uh, to play on the special teams exclusively. He'd gone down, and I think he just lost track of that football. There was plenty of time for him to cut over and perhaps get a hand on it. You saw the, the head shake there. Jennings. for Alvin Moore. First time he's carried the ball. He's from Arizona State. Acquired from the Colts in a trade for Robbie Martin early this year. Ticks down toward the two-minute warning. Second down and eight for the Detroit Lions. But it's been a Lions typical first half at home. And that's how they have beaten some quality teams. Oh, the Thanksgiving version of the wave here at the Silver Dome. The Lions in their sixth possession. As you can see, they've Scored two touchdowns and a field goal and punted twice. They've not turned it over. It's second down and eight at the Detroit 22. Jones hit by Mel. Lynn supporting at the 24-yard line, and the Jets will use a timeout. One minute and 53 seconds remaining in the half. The Jets hoping they'll get one more chance to cut into the Lions' lead. Clock here in the first half, and the Jets hoping they can stop Hipple and the Lions get the ball back. 152 remaining. But they won't. Leonard Thompson has a first down at the 34. Bobby Jackson with a tackle. And now the clock will run 142. And now the Lions may try to move and add to that 17 to 3 lead. The Lions, I think, who would have been content with that to go into the locker room now have field position. They have the advantage here. Although the clock is ticking, they haven't called a timeout. Nice play as they bring the receiver all the way across. Thompson, who was running that play beautifully on, on Tuesday in practice, makes it work here in the ballgame. Down. Will throw. This time to Alvin Moore. And Moore stops the clock at the 42-yard line. Kirk Springs there for the Jets after a nine-yard play. At the 40 from Miami of Ohio, native of Cincinnati. Make that an eight-yard gain, second down and two at the 42 with one minute, eight seconds remaining in the half. At halftime, Cloyce Box, some of you old-timers will remember the lanky wide receiver of the Lions, and he's had a very successful life after football and has shared it with football and his former teammates. It's a nice story. I hope you stay with us. That'll stop the clock. 103 left. The Lions would be leading 21 to 3, but for a sure touchdown drop by tight end Rob Rubick on their first opportunity. I'm sure, though, Dick, that they're extremely pleased with the lead they have on the clock and the fact that they have simply outplayed the Jets in virtually every department in this first half. Third down and 12. Make that third down and two at the 42. Hipple looking for Thompson. Almost intercepted by Kirk Springs. Jackson was there as well, but it was Springs who had his 
eyes focused on an interception. The timing, and it's something that uh, Bob Greasy talked about early. You work every day on this surface, and the, the timing is different on an artificial surface. They know exactly where that ball is going to be. Of course, Bobby Jackson didn't. It was only the aggressive play by Kirk Springs there coming across from the safety position that saved the catch. The Jets with two timeouts remaining will get the ball 57 seconds on the clock at the moment clock stop and zone back at his 11 yard line. Mike Black a line drive zone racing up to the 22 now looking for the wall can't find it and is down at the 27 yard line Carl Bland and William Boo Boo Fazell made the tackle. It was a line drive kick that uh, many felt cost this Lion team a victory last week. They needed to keep the Tampa Bay Bucks pinned down. Black hit a line driver and allowed the Bucks to get down to put the winning points on the ball game, the tying points on the game, and eventually to win it. But, and earlier in the year, the same problem. So uh, Black, I'm sure, will get instructions as he heads to the sideline about getting that ball up in the air. And stay with us for NFL 85. You'll gobble up. The Turkey Awards of Pete Axel. Did he trap it? Yes. Incomplete pass to Schuler. He did a good job of trying to quickly trap that ball and tuck it home. It's like a catcher moving that ball back into the uh, strike zone. No question about it. It does come off the ground here as he goes down to try and scoop it. Saw it bounce in and the officials alertly on the spot to call it incomplete. 42 seconds left. Second and ten for the Jets. They trail 17 to three. Rocky Cleaver. That'll be enough for a first down at the 39. Angelo King and company with a tackle, and the Jets spend. Completed. No, they do not. They're letting the clock run. There now is. they stop it. Rocky they have one timeout remaining. No, they don't. Yeah. I saw the official wind it up. against the Lions Hector catches the ball and the clock stopped on the penalty with 16 seconds left Demetrius Johnson made the hit Billy Shields number 66 in there for Reggie McElroy and I believe maybe he's the one that they're going to ticket holding offense number 66 10 yards first down well, you don't miss very often on those holding calls, do you, big guy? I'll tell you, <laughs> it, I, I got held enough times that I kind of see those hands go out, and I see guys drug down, but we talked earlier about the day I played against Roger Brown. I held like a <laughs> son of a gun. <laughs> the first admission. <laughs> written apology on its way, Roger. Later joined Merlin as part of the fearsome foursome out of the Rams. Small world. Hector. Running out, and Hector springs a long gain to the 45, and the Jets do call time with nine seconds remaining. And Hector, 16 more yards, so it appears that Hector is going to get his 100 yard day, but it's empty so far. 83 yards for the half for Johnny Hector. Well, it would appear that Walton O'Brien, with nine seconds left, will try to go for the quick. Pass maybe uh, toward the sidelines, although they have a timeout remaining, uh, maybe a 20 yard gain, and hope that Pat Leahy can come in for a long field goal try. Plus 20 is the best in the league, the Bears, in the turnover table. The Jets are second best with a plus 13. But they were the best in the league in the giveaway department. And of course, the problem that they've had today, the two that they gave it away, here are those two plays where O'Brien fumbled the ball, both of which ended up giving the Lions good field position and giving the Lions points on the board. That first one a fumble. This is the second play where he just lost the ball as he's trying to get it up to throw it. Both of those, of course, recovered by William Gay, who's had an outstanding day so far. One led to a field goal, another a touchdown, and the 17-3 lead. And so the Lions protecting the ball. No turnovers, and the Jets best in the AFC. And there goes O'Brien down, and with it, any hope of a final score in the half for the New York Jets. A 
another sack the fifth of the first half for the Lions and William Gay if memory serves me has three of those he had three all year and three and a half against New York today happy Thanksgiving William Treat for the whole family tonight a public proposal to Felicia Ayers Allen of the Cosby Show. Hey, Ahmad, you got to be sharp. Get that little piece of Kleenex <laughs> off your chin. Well, you know, the man is falling apart. In the days prior to his proposal, he was easily one of the coolest, most suave guys around the National Football League. He's a mess now. I mean, he just can't pull himself together. But you'll be happy to learn that Felicia Ayers Allen, Claire Huxtable of the Cosby Show, is ready with her answer. Felicia? Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm cool, I'm cool. But you know, I'm starting to feel some of that momentum that the Detroit Lions have out there. I guess in my best Dick Enberg impression, oh my. <laughs> so when's the happy day? Um, we don't, we don't know yet. We haven't set a day yet. I but guess we haven't set a day. Have you set a day? You, do, you, do, do, no, don't say it. If you have, just be quiet. Tell me first. I guess I'm being quiet here, I guess. <laughs> Do I have to ask All your right. television husband for your permission? As a matter of fact, I did. I... <laughs> <laughs> I spoke with Bill, and... <laughs> Bob, Bob Greasy is helping Ahmad towel off. <laughs> and Bill, um, Bill says he's very pleased. Will Bill Cosby give the bride away? Yes. Oh, nice touch. Now, I, I... It's the first opportunity of this second half. Lions six and six fighting for a chance at a wild card, and the Jets battling to stay in first in the East. And Manley... Bounced out of bounds at the 24-yard line. First half statistics, Merlin Olson, and just one big number, and that's the second to last column. Turnovers, really uh, the situation, and we gave you a look earlier at the kind of field position that these teams have played out of. And, of course, uh, the Jets basically starting way down in their own area. You see the rushing yardage, and I talked about control of the line of scrimmage. Certainly favors the Jets as we expected, but that has not been as big a factor as we thought it would be. Two Eric Kimball touchdown throws, 17-3. Jones gets only a couple, maybe only a yard to the 25-yard line. Joe Plecko there for the Jets. I would like to have been in the New York Jets locker room at halftime. I would imagine that there were some... Uh, Pretty interesting things said by Joe Walton. He's an easygoing coach, but I think as he left the field, he was very angry. And you see the tightness of his jaws here. He's expecting his Jets to come out and show some of the enthusiasm that they lacked in that first half. Davlin Mullen, number 20, is playing the left corner. Bobby Jackson, uh, bothered by that neck injury, not starting the second half. Hippel on second and nine. Almost throws it to a New York Jet. Hamilton was there for the Jets as the ball overthrown by Hipple. Hipple pointing to himself saying, my fault. The Lions have utilized that play action into the right-hand side, running a, a play right at Gastineau and then quickly rolling out the other way. They've been getting extra time for Hipple to throw the football, and as you can see, his numbers on the day, very good. The big number, and some an area where he's had problems, interceptions, he had zero for the day. And he's always been hot as a Lion quarterback at home. He's 18-4 and four as a starter here in the Silverdome. Third and nine, chased by Lions. He throws, intercepted by Mullen. Davlin Mullen down at the Jets 48. There's the first turnover against the Lions, and let's see if the Jets capitalize. We speak about that big number being interceptions and a big zero. It suddenly will flash a one as Hipple threw a bad pass. No other way to describe it. Here it is as Mullen for Bobby Jackson gets his third intercept of the year. Gastineau getting pressure there. Looked like Gastineau may have hurt himself a little bit. He's being assisted off the field, walking tenderly as he heads for the sideline. Jets had broken huddle, but with Gastineau just getting off the field to play, referee Heberling uh, asking them to rehuddle. Here's the end of that play as he buries a shoulder into Hipple. 
Looked like uh, Alvin Moore may have whipped his legs into Gastineau. Oh, I think what he did is just pop that ankle, left ankle a little bit. Johnny Hector, who had a big first half, sprints to the Lion 33, but a flag is down. Great big play. A great big play. You can see Gastineau's pain, but the pain for the Jets continues as that fine run by Hector is going to be called back by a penalty. That would have been another 19 yards for Hector, who had 82 in the first half. Mickey Schuler, number 82, reading the lips of Heberling. Let's see what happened to Mark Gastineau. Maybe from this angle we can tell. He goes through, drives his helmet into Hipple, and then apparently the injury happening right here. You saw that right ankle turn underneath his own body. And that's what happens on the turf. The foot will catch, and it doesn't slide as it would on the natural turf. First down and 20, and the Lions are waiting for the draw, and Hector is swallowed up. No gain. Jimmy Williams, 59. Jimmy Williams, whose brother, Toby, drafted out of Nebraska by the New England Patriots. Jimmy was a first-round pick of the Lions, and he sent this message to his older brother. Eat lots of turkey, Toby. We're going to come and pluck you the next game. Of course, the Lions play in New England a week from Sunday. That game, of course, will have significance in that AFC East in the race the Jets are in right now. A loss here and a win by New England will put them back in the tie. On second down, 20. O'Brien to Schuler. Dragging tacklers to the Lions 48 yard line where it'll still be third and about seven. Taking Gastineau's equipment apart and got his shoe off. He may just have jammed that ankle. He's he works constantly on flexibility. And he may just have, have scared himself on that play a little bit. You know, watching him work out yesterday, did you see his upper arms on the front and the back of the arms? They were just all black and blue. Testimony to the beating that, well, everyone is hurt. I mean, there's no one who says, hey, I feel great at this time of the year in an NFL season. He was kicked in the shins, we understand. 35, O'Brien has to swallow it again. the sticking point. We talked about it early in the game. Bob Greasy talked about it at halftime. O'Brien, when he cannot find the open receivers, still has a moment of hesitation. Can't decide whether to get rid of that football or to run. And it's that sticking point that has killed him here today. Sixth sack of the day. There's the decision as he tries to break it away. And it's Eric Williams, the nose tackle, who comes all the way around Joe Fields to finally get him hidden under a wall of bodies there. Dave Jennings to punt. He averaged just 40 yards a kick in the first half. That's a good one. Pete Manley inside the 10. 20. 30-yard line goes Manley, and the Lions come out of that one rather nicely. Guy Bingham made the tackle for the Jets. We continue to struggle here at the Silverdome with three minutes gone in the third quarter. The first thing I think about is avoiding the two Hawks on the opposing team's uh, punting unit. Those are the two widest men with the first release uh, after the punt is made. After the catch and after avoiding those two people, I try to make something happen in terms of getting outside or inside and getting up the field. Yeah, good job for Manley. 20 yards on that return. James Jones, the fullback for three. Kyle Clifton, the tackler for the Jets. Now the Lions, 17 to three the lead and uh, kind of a quiet Thanksgiving Day game. We haven't heard a lot of noise from the robust fans here in Michigan and we certainly haven't heard much from the players from New York. Hipple on second and seven. Jones again, no gain. Lance Mel injured Arch and all in for another tackle. He leads the Jets on the season in tackles. Also on the tackle, the philosophy stays the same for this Lion offense, and they realistically don't need to change it. It's been very successful. Hammering again on the right-hand side. 
And obviously seeing Gastineau walk off the field with that injury, they've gone right back at it. Using that and then coming off of it with either counter action to the other side or play action passing. And it's a pass down. Kipple to accommodate over the middle to Leonard Thompson. First down. Boy, Thompson seems to be open anytime they want him on those crossing patterns. So Leonard Thompson Timing patterns across the middle. They know they're going to get one-on-one -on -one coverage. It's a pressing defense that the Jets are using, and Hipple doing a good job of putting that ball well up in front. Let's look and see why Hipple had so much time. You see Gastineau trying to drive inside and come off that injured ankle. He simply could not make it. Lost his feet in the turf. Good job of blocking out there as well by Stringer. Thompson's fourth catch. Draw play and a fumble. And did Alvin Moore get it back for the Lions? Apparently he did. So Moore, who has carried only once prior to that handoff and a bad exchange, but he was able to wrap it up and keep it in the Lions' possession. Joe Klecko gets tremendous penetration from that nose position. You see him angled there. Watch him as he drives in. Here's the man that'll come up inside. The collision is what is going to cause this fumble. Klecko right there, driving through, gets his shoulder, his fist, right into that football, and Moore alertly able to pounce on it to save the turnover. Moore again on the draw, and it's wide open for him. First down at the Jets' 45. Lance Mel finally caught him after a 13-yard gain. The biggest gain of the day for the rushing offense of the Detroit Lions. They crossed up the Jets. The Jets reading pass on the play. They got that little draw play into Alvin Moore, and he gets the good yardage. Play for Daryl Rogers at Arizona State. Rogers has really done an excellent job with all the injuries. The new coach has put some new pieces in the puzzle. Flags down as Jones is hammered at the 37-yard line by Rusty Gilbo. Penalty on the play. And while they check that out, we'd like to remind you that today's game from the Silver Dome between the Lions. That's a team declined by the Lions. Hipple wants to understand exactly what the options were. Yeah, they've marked off five yards against uh, the Jets. That was the announcement. Well, They declined the five-yard penalty, and they took the eight-yard gain. What they're saying is the captain called it without looking to the sideline, and uh, Rodgers wanted them to take the first and five. Instead, it's second and two. Successfully. The ball loose momentarily on the ground, but apparently Jones able to get his hands back on it. Oh, he's a, in the language of the players themselves, a horse at 6'2 two and 230. Billy Sims talked about him, and of course, he blocked for Billy when he first got here. Sims said he was the finest blocker he ever ran in behind, and also called him one of the most aware football players he had ever seen. First down, and the Lions trying to add to their 17 to 3 lead. Open again, Mark Nichols at the 19. Every time Hipples looks for a man open over the middle on a crossing pattern, he seems to be free. Such crispness in these patterns. And again, I think the sense of timing that you can develop on a surface and in an, in an auditorium, and this is almost an auditorium of this kind. They know what the kind, what the footing is going to be like. They're right there with the pass and with the cut, the timing pattern that is very difficult to stop with a man-to-man -man defense. Fumble, and hip 
fumble. Covers it for the Lions at the 26-yard line. James Jones unable to handle that exchange. Twice the ball has been on the ground in this drive, and I think Marty Lyons may have made a mistake on this play. Number 93. It looked like Marty had a chance to dive on that ball. I think he wants to pick it up here. Oh, I guess he just lost it. That's that's unfair, Marty, and I apologize. He lost the football. It slid away from him, and Eric Kippel followed it all away and got his body on it. Second down and 17. A reminder that later on we'll be selecting our Budweiser Most Valuable Player in today's game. Alvin Moore, just for a couple. Rusty Gilbo. And Lester Lyles on the tackle. Clock running, six minutes left in the third quarter. Lions lead by two touchdowns. Let's pass out a few bouquets along that offensive line. Steve Mott working hard on Klecko off the front. And of course, uh, Dorney inside. Stringer outside on that right-hand side. We've seen them hammering all day on the right-hand side. Back on that other side, Deke Crick and the big rookie, Lomas Brown. They've done a good job in there. Darrell Rogers feels this is the strength for the future of the Lions, that young, basically young offensive line. He's looking for Nichols, and that's going to be interference. Davlin Mullen on his back. Meanwhile, Hippo very slow in getting up as he was knocked on his front. It'll be first down for the Lions. Trying to get the ball in here, Dick, over the middle. Now watch all these men right here. A safety blitz. Everybody is coming up the middle. Hippo had to throw it. He didn't have enough time. He didn't have everybody blocked. If he did, he could have waited a little bit longer, but the throw ball was underthrown, and that is really what's caused the uh, interference. A costly mistake. I think Davlin Mullen could have left it, let it go. I don't think it would have ever been caught, but Mullen, sensing that perhaps it would be a touchdown, tried to get over the top to knock it away, and Caused the penalty, pick up a first down just outside the eight yard line. 15 yards on the penalty. Take the Jones, the throw to Thompson. Dallas, yeah, and they took Miami and San Francisco, and, but can they beat the Jets? Now it's late in the year, and the Jets are in first place. Boy, Daryl Rogers and the home cooking here in Pontiac. What a formula! Now if they can just figure out how to take the Silver Dome with them on the road. That's right. If only it weren't so heavy. Murray, yeah, great move. Just broke inside, left Davlin Mullen hanging, and pulls it out for the touchdown. No way did I expect the Jets to be blown out this way. Hector at the one-yard line. 25, 30, 40. And finally, Bostic bumps him out of bounds near midfield at the 47 of the Jets. Now, Bob Greasy loves to keep his eyes on the quarterback. The situation, the right play at the right time, Dick. The strong safety is going to blitz Springs. The weak safety has to go strong side, and when the wide receiver breaks to the inside, there's nobody left there to cover him. Take a look. Springs moves strong side. Thompson gets inside of Mullen. There is no help to the inside. It's just a matter of the right play at the right time. Thompson had one touchdown all year, and he's got two on this Thanksgiving Day. O'Brien to tune, and he's out of bounds at the 43 of the Lions. That'll be close to a first down. Zoom doing a little tap dance on the sideline there. Looked like he was going out of bounds a yard short of that first down, and at the last second, he'll just hop. Watch his feet. This is a rookie. He's headed to the sideline. Watch that little tap dance. He jumps down, gets both toes down for first down yardage. That's a that's a very smart play. And a great athlete. He was a triple jumper and hurdler in college at Wisconsin and invited to the Olympic trials in both events. There he is again, and almost Bobby Watkins the other way for the Lions. And 
that's about all it would have taken as the Jets are already in a mighty deep well down 24 to 3 and Watkins had a sure six if he catches that one. The Detroit Lions continue to knock those footballs away instead of intercepting them. I'm sure Wayne Fonts wants to give his whole defensive backfield core lessons on catching the football because they have had so many chances today and could have broken this game apart many times in the first half. Second and ten. Nothing there. Eric Williams, the young nose tackle from Washington State, made the stop along with William Frizzell. This telecast presented by authority of the National Football League intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Detroit Lions and the National Football League is prohibited. Third down and ten for the New York Jets. Their first place position alone atop the AFC East in jeopardy. Now in New England and Miami will enjoy their holiday all times he's been sacked. John Bostic celebrates for the Lions, but it was Steve Bach, number 68, who was there first. Neil Lomax had been just slightly ahead in the sack race. He'd been sacked 48 times to 47 for O'Brien, but the way O'Brien is going, Lomax may get a break this week. He may lose his number one position, and believe me, not an enviable position. Can I ask you a question about the low interception rate of O'Brien and not to take anything away from that, but it is it that much better when you're sacked that often? He's fumbled twice today. Is that any better than being intercepted? Both negative stats, but I would say you've got to get somewhere in between, Dick. You've got to be able to throw that football away at times, sometimes take the sack. Pete Manley, who had a 20-yard return. Fumble! be the break the Jets need. No, the Lions come up with that one. Indeed, Turkey Day in Michigan is a Detroit celebration on this 1985 holiday. 39-yard punt, six-yard return, and he'll have his uh, very unique opinions about the 45-second clock, who he likes in the final four. He'll be talking with, don't call me Bobby, Indiana coach Bob Knight. Al McGuire. Well, I hope he gets his enthusiasm up this year. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he can coach these Jets in that. Right, the Lions leading 24 to 3. Eric Hipple. Eric Ellsworth Hipple, thank you. And it's been an up and down career for him since he started. I remember on a Monday night in 81 when he started against the Bears. No one knew who Eric Hipple was. He only threw four touchdowns. Who is this guy? He's been up and down. Of course, some of those problems, injury problems. And believe me, I think one of the reasons he's played with so many injuries this year, doesn't dare get out of the lineup, figure it's going to be one of those blank years again. Second down and eight. With 3.05 remaining in the third quarter. Jones is hammered. He has really taken some tough licks today. Lance Mill, 56 in on that stop. We talked with a linebacker from Penn State, Mel, yesterday, and asked him talking about the holidays and his father. And I said, well, what was his influence on you? He said, he gave me room to grow. He was there when I had a question, but he let me find out for myself. Got a nice memory. Very special. We mentioned, too, I think, early in this game that Mel is playing hurt today, but he is too valuable to come out of that defense, even if he's a half a step slow. Third down and seven. Hipple to Jones. Jones will he get the first down he's knocked down at the 21 that'll be a yard shy of a first down Harry Hamilton denied the first down and Hipple is angry he's taken a couple of borderline hits in terms of releasing the ball and whether or not he was roughed or not this is the play that you just saw getting away from Steve Mott number 73 Klecko I don't know that Klecko could see that ball disappear though Klecko's head was down the defense of the defensive lineman, even though it was late, I don't think Pleco could see the ball go. Mike Black to punt. Claims he punts the ball 50,000 kicks a year to stay in shape. 
Maybe at least 100 a day during the season and 150 to 200 each day off season. A spinner that comes to Sohn at the 35, 40, 45. Sohn at the 50. Got a little competitor. Sohn is to the 48 of the Lions. 2-0-2 left in the third quarter. That was a 45-yard punt, 17 yards on the return. It's a Lions Day, though, 24-3 over the New York Jets. Time running out in the third. Question is, what does that man have over Ahmad Rashad? Well, Rex Norris, we've talked about marriage all day, married last night. His wife's name, Alicia. And she must be understanding, but they're getting a nice present here with the way the, uh, the Lions are playing. Yeah, what a honeymoon. What a hit. Tony Page hangs on to the ball. Angelo King rattles him and O'Brien under pressure again. You almost have the feeling that the defensive man threw the pass. They hit O'Brien and provide the impetus to that ball getting away. Watch the shot he'll take from the backside. Gay is there. 62 coming around from the backside. Curtis Green and the two of them hit O'Brien from the back. Jimmy Williams from the front. That's a sandwich job right there. And O'Brien's going to say, hey, lock that back door. They've been coming in from that rear side all day on him. Second down and one. Good catch by Page. It's the first New York drive to start on the Detroit half of the field. Looked like the Lions were offside. Oh, Hector will carry on through. No, apparently contact before the snap, and they whistle it dead. Hector on the run. We're going to keep our eye on that umpire, Gordon Wells. Of all the officiating jobs there are, there's enough pressure, but the umpire in football. Encroachment. Nose man, five yards, first down. The umpire in football, in essence, is playing in a linebacker position with people flying all around him, and he has to keep his eyes on the ball. He is one of my favorites. I remember a lot of conversations. He's, of course, the man who calls a lot of the holding penalties, and I used to walk back occasionally to Gordon and say, Gordon, he's holding me. He's holding me. He also has to be a very good athlete and a very aware person to stay out of the traffic. First down, O'Brien looking long and has Toon at the 10. Al Toon is in the end zone for a touchdown. With 1.04 left in the third quarter, hope for the Jets. And they have their first touchdown. A game that has so thoroughly been dominated by the Lions, and finally just a glimmer. Al Toon breaking down and into the center. Find some openings. In fact, lots of room there. Demetrius Johnson trying to catch up. No chance for him. Bruce McNorton, 29, finally makes the tackle, but he's in the end zone. His third touchdown, Tune. Oh, he has brilliance written all over him. Pat Leahy's right. Pat Ryan hold. It's a 24 to 10 game on the 35 yard touchdown. O'Brien to Tune. With a diagram, here's Bob Greasy. The key here, Merlin, this time he has time to throw the ball. Walker is going to clear it out, and Toon will come down deep and break to the inside. The ball will be delivered right in this area as we take a look at the play action to hold the linebackers up front just a little. Walker clears through. Plenty of time for O'Brien. Now he makes a good throw, and Toon gets it into the end zone. Speed of the wide receivers has a lot to do with that. Demetrius Johnson, number 21, who has to read the eyes of the quarterback, just a little late coming across. Tune, of course, showing you how well he runs with the football. I don't think there's a receiver in football today that does a better job after the catch than Al Toon. Got 38 inch arms. Can you imagine going to start a 31 inch waist and 38 inch arms? And he uses that wing spread. I mean, not only to catch the ball, but to fend off the tackler. Said yesterday, he said, my high school coach told me that I should think after I catch the football, catch the football first, but he said, think touchdown. Once you got that football, I've got a chance to score a touchdown, and that might be the most important touchdown of the day. Now it's up to the Jets' defense. The Lions in command, 24 to 10. Final minute, third quarter. Alvin Hall, who has broken Tommy Watkins' Lion record for kickoff return yardage. He's the all-time Lion return man. Gets a few more, and uh, some of the fellas getting a little anxious to get to the table. 
Sunday here on NBC. The Giants will host the Cleveland Browns. Two teams battling to get in the playoffs. And the same can be said for the Broncos. Stats and we'll get, get you tuned up for that Giants. Jones wrestled down at the 27-yard line. Gain of about five. With 45 seconds left in this third period, Charles Jackson, number 55, with a tackle. He played his football at the University of Washington. Chris Dietrich, an injured lion on that last play. As you see, Wayne Fonts. You saw him standing up. Looks like he's got the bad faults that I have seen such unbelievable injuries this year. You can't, you can't imagine. by Mel. Mel, he, he makes tackles that you hear. Those will be the final seconds ticking away here in the third quarter and probably the last play of the period. And Dietrich, okay, is back in. Glover from University of Maryland, the number two draft pick, comes out. And the gun sounds the end of the third quarter here at the Silver Dome. Lynn Olson, Bob Greasy at the Silver Dome in Pontiac, Michigan, sending our best on this Thanksgiving holiday. Fourth quarter, Lions lead the Jets, 24-10, third and three for Hipple. And he gives to Moore, who's tackled at the 30 short of the first down. Barry Bennett got the tackle. Let's go back to the storied guard career of Kevin Glover. Glover, young rookie, gets in the ball game. Number 63, number 53, right in the middle of the screen. Now, stop it right there. Watch what he does with this right hand. He's going to take a whole handful of cloth and literally is going to tackle Kyle Kifton. Look at him. Turn him right around there. The young man said this. Hey, my man is not going to make the tackle. I think he has a great career in this league ahead <laughs> he, of him. He can play guard. <laughs> Mike Black will punt in the Jets early in this fourth quarter. We'll get the ball in a situation where they have to take uh, the most of each opportunity. There's the best kick of the day by Black. Sanson to his 21. And he runs into his own blocker, and down he goes at the 27. In the grasp of Tom Tenure. 49-yard punt by Black. A seven-yard return for Sohn of the Jets. Ken O'Brien and the Jets on the field scored their only touch. They're looking so strong and playing so well last week against the Patriots. And yeah, they're in the Lions den. Hector to the 32-yard line. A good pickup for Hector who was closing in on that 100-yard mark. Dick, even, even on a day when things are not going right, you go back and you look at the films and you'll find some superb efforts. Johnny Hector, boy, what a great job he has done today. An all-out effort on his part. Certainly he's going to be one that will enjoy looking at those films, although he will not enjoy the loss if it ends up that way. Al Toon, the touchdown maker a moment ago, and you see how tough he is to get down. Bruce McNorton finally bumps him out of bounds, but... You better be sure you have a good hold of tune the way he can twist those legs away. In fact, he said, I'm envious of Freeman McNeil. It's all right to catch the ball, but I want to run it. I like the feeling of breaking tackles, and in this case, that rib injury may have uh, been bumped a bit. He mentioned that he is wrapped very tightly for the ribs. He's on the outside. Good time to throw for O'Brien, but watch the shot right here. Left side ribs that are bothering tune. That's his 25th catch in the last four games. Hector dragged down. Might have picked up a yard, perhaps not, as Keith Ferguson, number 65, the former San Diego Charger, led the Chargers in sacks last year with eight. They put him on waivers here this month in November, and the Lions quickly claimed him. Played his high school ball in Miami, Florida. I know a lot of fans down there watching, and undoubtedly the Dolphin fans are rooting for the Lions today. We pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. You're watching Channel 11, WPXI-TV, Pittsburgh. O'Brien to Sone. Close to a first down. Hit hard by William Graham and John Bostic. We're in the fourth quarter, 12 and a half minutes remaining at the Silver Dome. The Lions leading the Jets 24 to 10. And this one close enough to measure. 
It appears to be short by about the length of the football. The Lions have continued to play a great deal of six defensive back alignment against the Jets, and one has to wonder if they would dare do that with Freeman McNeil on the field. I think his absence, even though Hector is playing well, allows the defense to play a little kind of a little different kind of game. Now the Lion fans now start to take things seriously. Page runs into his own man and then submarines close to the first down. 10 and a 220 pound package Tony Page Leon Evans and Jimmy Williams with a tackle Page with a little second effort there made first contact well behind the line but I believe he did make the yardage of course uh, we've seen him standing there I don't think he's been on the bench all day long but the thing he would like to be able to do is to get that body of his healthy had rib and rib injury early and he said you know anything above the waist I can run with I can play with you see the first down is good but he said when I'm hurt below the waist I count so heavily on the hard cuts and on the weight that I can put on those ankles and put on those knees he said when I'm hurt below the waist I'm not much good man of the year candidate in the NFL representing the Jets Freeman McNeil who loves uh, to work with young people gives of his time and his money's in that direction Hector inside the 45 yard line and that puts him over 90 yards on the afternoon clock runs 11 46 11 45 left Hector a terrific long jumper at college 26 feet four inches looking at this game and if you didn't know that the Jets had a Freeman McNeil I think you would say well gosh they've got to stay with this Johnny Hector the one difference between Hector and McNeil is the home run ball on second and seven to tune and dragged down by McNorton but it's another jet first down and just to underline again what tune has meant to O'Brien and the Jets four games Last four games as a starter, he has caught 26 passes. Boy, that is, this young man who signed, what, about the second week of the season, was reluctant to, to sign, didn't like the negotiation. Boy, they've got themselves a gem. Has also had to learn the whole offense and adjust to the NFL in that period of time. They've done it uh, remarkable, the remarkable dexterity. O'Brien off to Dennis Blygen into the game. First time we've seen him. Blygen from St. John's has about seven flagged down. Dick, after watching the Lions dominate so well early, Jets finally getting themselves into this game, and then yellow flag on the ground. If they can get a score on the board. Go 17-24. Illegal use of the hands. Away. Number 68 offense. 10 yards. First down. Richie McElroy back in. He set out for uh, some time in this game. Billy Shields replaced him, and he picked up a penalty. Now it's a new rule this year that the clock continues to run. The penalty does not stop the clock in this situation. It will in the final two minutes. So it's running at 220. First down and 20 for O'Brien. The backfield of Blygen. He is whacked at the 37 yard line. Angelo King and Eric Williams. Eight yards for Blygen. Also, Angelo King. Jets trying to get a little screen going here, Merlin. Man's going to come out. Now, watch Alexander and Fields both come out to block as the wide receivers drive their men downfield. Looks downfield. It's an option screen. He has the option to throw it downfield or dump it off to the back. Good pursuit from the inside by the Lion defense. Second and 12 to give us to Hector trying to get outside. He does at the 30. And a first down at the 21. William Graham knocks him out of bounds. And that stops the clock at the 924 mark. And Johnny Hector will remember Thanksgiving 85, his first 100 yard rushing day in the NFL. He takes a breather. 
Rocky Cleaver in. Blygen is in. Lions make some defensive changes. Joe Walton, his team down by three touchdowns. They've scored in the third quarter to make it 24 10, and they drive deep now with a first down at the Lions 21. Schuler with a good catch. John Bostic, cornerback from Bethune Cookman, was right on top of him. To Mickey Schuler, Bostic, Ken O'Brien. Maturing during the course of this year, and so evident his last three games. The Dolphins nearly 400 yards and five touchdowns against Tampa Bay and 367 against New England 311 yards and a touchdown and in the three games intercepted only once. He's not been intercepted today but he has fumbled twice. Recovered by the Lions. Second and five. Misdirection to Hector. Oh a good cut by Hector. He's at the 10 yard line with a first down. Keith Ferguson made the tackle. Watching from Freeman McNeil play has given Hector some ideas as he uses a little shake here. You kind of feel like you're there with him. Watch the little move here. A little fake inside and a dip back outside. Fake that defensive back right off his feet. Freeman watching, I'm sure, approved of that as he looks on from the sideline. Look at it. Oh, he can taste it. O'Brien was fortunate to escape the sack. And Graham and Watkins had good coverage on Toon. We looked at O'Brien's number, numbers just a moment ago. They do not tell the whole story. One of the other things that Kenny O'Brien has been able to do over the latter part of this season is to bring his team from behind. He did it in Miami with a late drive to go ahead, even though they lost the game. They were able to do it against Seattle. They brought that long drive back for the win against Seattle, so he can bring a team back. They need the touchdown here. Alvin Hall stops Hector after just two yards. McNorton with an assist. Yeah, the crowd sensing the importance of a goal line stand by the Lions getting into the fray here with eight minutes and ten seconds left. The field goal won't help that much. They need the touchdown. They're behind by 14. Need the touchdown. They didn't fool the Lions with a run. Schuler to the right. Tune and Walker left. Contact. Ball not snapped. Linesman comes in to talk with a referee. It looked like Reggie McElroy may have moved out of his set Ball position. Start, number 68. Offense. I didn't see any contact though. He just moved, Dick. You can't move. I think he lifted his hand up. Maybe we'll have a, a chance to look at it. Reggie is right there. You see that flex? He lifted up his hand. He just lifted up his hand, and you can't do that once you're in the three-point stance. Well, the noise may have paid off. The Lions fans could well be credited with that five yards. So it's third and goal from the 13. O'Brien to Hector. Three yards, that's all. William Frizzell. Darrell Rogers' defense is tough. They are tough down there near the goal line, and I swear I just saw a snowball hit the field out there. <laughs> <laughs> and Hector uh -oh. holding that right ankle. Leahy is in, so despite the fact there's only 7 minutes 27 seconds left, apparently the Jets will go for three, but we have a timeout. Introducing the amazing Minolta Maxim, the world's easiest SLR, because it alone has built-in automatic focusing. Look, Maxim's autofocus lets you get perfect shots before others can even focus. Change lenses. Maxim again gets the shots that used to get away. Only the human eye focuses faster. Minolta Maxim. Only from the mind of 
Melora. Yes, I remember Herb, an usual child. In our search for Herb, the one man who's never tasted a Burger King burger, a face from Herb's past. You had to know how to talk to him. Herbert, pay attention. This is what makes Burger King burgers taste so good. Flame broiling, not frying. Think about the juice. Herb, if a field goal, this one will be 27 yards. Is it a fake? Nope, Leahy nails it through for three, but that only gets the Jets within 11. And they have just 7.07 remaining. Now Leahy and the Jets on fourth and goal from the 10 get three. Just over seven minutes remain, 24-13 Lions after a questionable field goal attempt by the Jets. So let's look for an onside kick here. No, they're going all the way. Well, that's two that we've been wrong on. Cam Jones takes the touchback at the 20. The, if it was a 10-point game, you could understand it, but the field goal pulled the Jets within 11, which means that New York still has to score twice. As few opportunities as the Jets have had to get down close to that end zone makes us wonder why they would elect to take the three. Had they missed... And the Lions would have had to start the ball with the ball the 10 or worse. Uh, it's still going to take the Jets two touchdowns to either tie it or win it. So that three is an empty three. At the moment. It moved 14 to 24, comes out throwing. That surprised the Jets. Leonard Thompson with about seven. Davlin Mullen with a tackle. Some good clubs have gone away with long chins from the Silver Dome. Dallas an 8 and 14 lost here. Tampa Bay has lost to more than the Lions. The 49ers tough loss here. The Dolphins beaten here. Bud Grant lost here. And the Jets 9 and 3 are looking at a possible loss with six and a half minutes remaining. Continues to roll. Terry Hamilton made the tackle. First and ten, Detroit. Detroit with a win would be seven and six, and uh, we'll look all the more at their tough defeat at Tampa Bay First in overtime ten, last Sunday. The Lions looking at a wild card. Of course, the Bears have uh, wrapped up that Central Division of the NFC, but the Lions still feel if they win their last four, they're going to make the playoffs as a wild card. They didn't. A lot of fans didn't think this would be one of the wins. Under pressure, hits his tight end David Lewis, tackled immediately. Terry Glenn, number 35, and Rich Miano, 36. Rich Miano on the tackle. Here are the remaining games. They host the Saints, Sands, Plum Phillips, Green Bay, or I mean the Rat New Orleans, then Green Bay and Chicago at home. They finish with the Bears on the 22nd. It's New, New England, England, not New Orleans. I wonder that didn't seem right. <laughs> I, I think I'd rather go to New Orleans. <laughs> that might have been a Detroit fan working on that traffic. Draw play, and it doesn't work as Alvin Moore wrapped up in the center of the line. Harry Hamilton, the safety man, right up there to force it. And a loss of a couple. Despite a twisted ankle, they've wrapped it heavily, will return. And although the, just talking about New England, I'm sure their players gathered around a television set and enthusiastic about seeing the Jets lose. Unfortunately, they've lost Grogan. They've got some other serious problems. Johnny Hanna is hurt. And they, although they'll be in the tide if they can win their game on Sunday, it, it looks kind of tough for the New England Patriots right at the moment. Third down play. Second effort by Manley gets the first down, and that is a big play by Manley. The Jets, had they stopped him at the 40, it would have been fourth down, but it appears that Manley, with that stretch, has the first down. He does. What a great catch. Uh, talking about the quality of the receivers here, the conversations uh, didn't include the kind of catches we've seen here today. They have played outstanding football. Manley made a big catch. Lewis, you saw go up and make a tough catch. Mark Nichols made a couple of tough catches. 
Clock running, 3.45 left. Lions 24, Jets 13. Nichols trying to stay in bounds, but a good defensive play by Kerry Glenn to knock him out of bounds. It'll be close to a first down at the Jets 49. Nick, if, if the Lions can't figure a way to take this Superdome or Silverdome with them, maybe they can get a uh, one of these hip guys that uh, hypnotizes uh, the quarterbacks and they, they can convince Eric Hipple that he's playing here in the Silverdome. He has had one outstanding day. Well, we told you about the uh, success. He's lost only four times in 22 starts at home. Doesn't quite work out that way on the road where he's 6 and 16. Comfort and confidence. Those are Bob Greasy's words. They certainly hit the crew today. Second and short. Jones has the first down at the 46 yard line and that clock ticking away against the Jets. Four more downs for the Lions. Well and if if the Jets defense can't stop the Lions then going for the touchdown or the field goal purely academic. You have a feeling though had they scored a touchdown in that last possession it would be a different spirit on that defensive side of the line for the Jets. They use a timeout with 3.23 left. got to be more purpose in your diving. You've got to concentrate. Concentrate. Focus on the dive. From the United States, Wendy Wyman. It's not enough to do many things well. You want to do one thing, the best. That takes determination, concentration, purpose. Everything for one thing. EF Hutton, we understand the importance of purpose. We concentrate on one purpose, serving the investor. And that's why it is, why it's been for 80 years. When EF Hutton talks, people listen. This bugs for all that you do. They said this city was through. You said, no way. Each day the spirit's growing. Your pride is really showing you. Make America work and big buds for you. Here's to you. Beachwood Age for that clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. This buds for you. This fall, NBC Sports has a November to remember when heart pounding excitement returns. Now for the Lions, James Jones. You saw Jets coming and protected the football. May have lost a yard. Kyle Clifton there first. For Bob Greasy, there's the second timeout being spent by the New York Jets with 3.09 left. You look at Joe Fields, hoping the New Yorkers get another chance. The whole issue of you know, Ken O'Brien being the number one rated passer, you know, the interception rate being so low, only six interceptions all year. And the other side of that are all those sacks. Over 50 times he's bit in the dust. What is your reaction? Well, I think coming into this game, Dick, there is no question that he was the hottest quarterback in the league, but his style is a little bit different. He hurts the Jet offense by taking all the sacks. He is the highest percentage passer in the National Football League. He should throw some of those away, lower his passing percentage, but take fewer sacks because when you take in those sacks, then you just have to go back and make that yardage up. Bob, when you watch him, you have the feeling that there's a progression there, and he's so confident right up to the point where he can't find that receiver, and it almost looks like at that point there's a, a moment of panic. Well, there a lot of quarterbacks are like that. Well, it's that, <laughs> no, it's that, cut, that desire to complete every pass that you call, and I was the same way. You don't want to give the ball up. You don't want to admit that this play is no good, and I have to now throw the ball away. The opposite to O'Brien, I would say, is Marino. Marino throws the ball away as soon as he sees either the coverage is going to be there or the line is going to get to it. He's got a lot lower percentage, but a lot fewer sacks. Second down and 11. Meanwhile, Eric Kippel has stolen the show for the quarterbacks today. Jones gets outside, and Kirk Springs makes the tackle at the 43, but Jones wisely stays inbounds. 
It'll bring up third down. Will the Jets spend another time out here? No, apparently. Well, now they do. That's their last one. Well, we have a, another moment here. Uh, I'd like to throw a question to you, too, Bob. I know that one of the big stories in the year, obviously, the undefeated season so far, the Chicago Bears. Go back in your career to an undefeated season and toward the last part of the year. What kind of pressure was on your team? What kind of pressure is on the Bears? Well, the, there's no pressure to win their division, obviously. They go to have the home field advantage through the playoffs. The thing is history. They're, they're fighting against history. And the, the old adage, the cliche, one at a time is really coming home here. They have to win one at a time. If they lose, so what? They're still going to have a good position for the playoffs. So I don't think there is much pressure on the Bears to go undefeated, as a lot of people think. If they do it, that's fine. But if they don't, they're still in great shape and they can go into the playoffs. Do you think they'll go unbeaten in the regular season? <laughs> well, let me say this. They're the only team that has a shot this no, year. Come on. <laughs> come on now. I play Miami on Monday night. You think what a season for Mike Ditka and all those great fans in Chicago. Well, they deserve a chance to cheer such an outstanding team. They've been so faithful to that ball club through the years and a lot of lo lonely ones. Hipple wide open is Thompson. He's going. puts on right here a little inside move on Johnny Lynn that took Johnny off his feet and Thompson's in the end zone. Well, more believers the Jets now believe and the Lions power at home. Murray skits one. Watch this one that he takes from Gastineau after he throws the football. Yeah those don't hurt when you see the uh, Officials' arms go straight up over his head. Well, he's calling a touchdown himself, and I don't blame him. He has had an outstanding day, as has Ash and Toast. And they have beaten quality clubs from start to finish here in 85, and they'll get one more chance to at home against quality, the Bears in the finale. Boy, will that be a hot ticket here in Michigan? Eddie Murray to kick it off. Johnny Hector. Not running all out. That angle looked a little iffy. A little iffy and ouchy. And down he goes just across the 20. Boo Boo Frizzell. He said he got that nickname. He was a Yogi Bear, the cartoon fan. In fact, he uses Yogi as his moniker on his license plate. Have a feeling for the kind of frustration. I tell you, you come into a game like this, you know you're a better team, and I think all of us agree that uh, on paper, Bob Greasy said it early, and we we pretty much agreed on that. The Jets are a better team on paper. You don't play this game on paper. You've got to prove it here on the field. And the Lions have been the better team today by far. Schuler significant reception at the 30 an eight yard play and the clock runs Angelo King with a tackle the Jets go without a huddle second and three from the 30 little dump off to Blygen that's a give me a first down the Lions will give the Jets all of those they want as the clock ticks away toward the two minute timeout first and ten from the 42 the two-minute timeout. Miami, of course, Miami on a Monday night against the Bears. And even if these Lions can't fight their way into the playoffs, what a nice foundation Daryl Rogers has built by being able to defeat quality teams. That's something to lean back on next year and the year after. Lighten. Skids down at the 45-yard line of first down. Of course, the Jets have used up all their timeouts. So the Jets will go nine and four overall. Denver eight and four. Raiders eight and four. See, there's also the wild card possibilities in there as well. We'll give you another look at that. Schuler 
dragged down quickly by Angelo King. So not only is it New England Miami down there at eight and four they both win they're tied for first but those are the other teams battling for the wild card the Raiders involved and it goes down to six and six of course the AFC undoubtedly will uh, not have a wild card represented it's a horrible football on occasion away from home here last in the league rushing the ball or last in the offense you wouldn't know it today as soon unable to gather that in in case you join us late, the Detroit Lions are last in the entire NFL in offense. They're last in the entire NFL in stopping the run, and yet they're about to be seven and six and still have hopes of a playoff. And can they show them games that were played here in Silverdome? I think you might be right about that. Ryan running out, a minute 17 left. O'Brien to Schuler, stopped at the 12. Demetrius Johnson and a flag is down. That will stop the clock and that a break for the Jets on the penalty. Dick, you have to go back and try and climb into the head of this Jet team. They just came off a very big win over New England. They went into sole possession of first place. They knew that they were without the services of, of Freeman McNeil last week. They overcame that last week and I think everyone expected him to play in this game today. He wasn't able to get healthy enough to play in this game. I think that had a downer effect. Pass interference against the uh, Lions declined. Oh I found another secret weapon though for the Lions. You forgot about Brewster Shaw. Brewster Shaw. Commander Brewster Shaw and the crew on the space shuttle Atlantis. They're watching today's game in outer space. Wesley Walker dragged down at the eight. Commander Shaw is from right near Armada, Cass City, Michigan. A big Lion fan, and you think about this game going around the nation, around the world, and into outer space. We understand every time they got within 75 miles of the Earth, they had to go into the blackout zone. <laughs> <laughs> you think they're sending some of that solar energy down here for the Lions today? They've been getting their energy from somewhere. Played an outstanding football game game against the Lions. Of course, they're bragging their throws, trying to get the final seconds of this game to tick away, and for Joe Walton, it's just a cosmetic touchdown they're going for anyway. 102 left. Bill Rogers in his first year after 20 years of head coaching in the college ranks. O'Brien to Schuler touchdown. Now the favorite target of Ken O'Brien, tight end Mickey Schuler, and Schuler says, let go of my anatomy. McNorton said uh, Hoist did like the drumstick. Why do that at this point in the game? Kind of silly. They know they're going to win this ball game. Why get a get in a battle out there and get thrown out? Maybe angry that Schuler ended up with the touchdown. Just barely time to throw this one as he works in front of McNorton. McNorton tried to step it away. Let's watch the end of that play. He got a hold of his leg. <laughs> well, I don't know what. That's a new and funky a little chicken, silly. isn't that's what they're doing silly. there? It's some kind of dance, I guess. I don't know. Drive a point by Leahy is good, and it's 31 to 20. Here comes the onside kick. Ooh, free ball, and the Jets can't get it, and that more or less typifies their frustration on this day. How many times has that ball been on the carpet for anyone to grab, and it always seems to kick away from a white uniform? They still haven't signaled it's the Lions ball, so hold on. William Gay, one of the defensive stars for the Lions. Detroit ball. Big smiles on that Detroit sideline, and rightfully so. He El Manley. <laughs> he leaves it spinning out there. Well, they've got the Jets in a world. They've had the Jets spinning all day long. Texas, we uh, wish you all again a happy Thanksgiving and the meaningfulness of this day. It's just a reminder of how important those we love are and those precious things that our forefathers celebrated. We, in turn, take count again today. We hope they're all happy counts for you. Clock ticking away. Uh, no way to get it stopped now. No reason to stop it, really.
One snap. And the Lions go 6-0 and at home. The Jets lose their fourth of the season, are now 9-4. and Their sole possession of first place in jeopardy, and the cheers from the remaining fans, 65,000-plus in attendance, 70,000 tickets were sold, go to Darrell Rogers and the Detroit Lions. Beat the Jets 31 to 20. We hope you'll stay with us. NFL 85 will be right back with a special report, highlights of today's game, as well as interviews with those who took part in this contest. Looks like Ahmad Rashad, a man who knows quarterbacks well. 490 of the New York Jets a Thanksgiving defeat. It was Eric Hipple and Leonard Thompson, the key combination. They hooked up for three touchdowns, one of 39, one of eight, and one of 44 yards. And Hipple also tossed one in to his other wide receiver, Mark Nichols.